So uh, I'm on the couch with Ken Grant. Ken is someone I've known for many years now because uh, you came to Farnham when I was teaching there. What years did you go to Farnham? 87. I think I arrived and so 87 to 90. 99 right. finished. Yeah. And you're a good scouser, so it must have been a shock coming to uh, posh Surrey. Yeah, yeah, a real shock. Uh, quite a nice place to get some space from to, to go back into what you're doing. But I used to use, I remember you rang up and asked my, my mother where I was because I, I didn't tend to be there that much for the last year or so. But I'd come back to Liverpool, make pictures and then go down and use that two or three week spell to, to develop the film, look at the pictures and then probably talk to you if you're about and then, then head off again. So although you were at Farnham, you didn't shoot anything in the south, it is all continues to shoot in Liverpool? It, mostly, mostly. I, I do, uh, I'd sneak off a few times to Aldershot and photograph around the, the periphery of what was a very working class army barracks, uh, the paratroopers home uh, for the British Army. So I do a lot of that, but mainly I'd use it as a space to think about the things I was doing in Liverpool, yeah. So one of the things uh, which of course you're well aware of is that um, uh, you made this book dummy called A Course in Loyalty, mm. which uh, you did in 1990 I see. Mm. Was this the, the work for your de degree show? Yeah it was, it was. It was um, probably one way of pulling it together quite quickly but it's also the work that eventually became the start of the, the close season which may or may not be a completely different thing when you start to think about it. It seemed like in one way it was it was finished but then when you're in the same place and you're making pictures all the time you tend to come back and revisit the same people the same places so the close season even though some of the pictures were made in 87 88 it ended up being um, not published until 2002 i think so a long time after this so this is this is done in 1990 i mean it's amazing to look at this and you see some of your classic pictures here mm which are still uh, are alive and well, if you like. There's some of your best-known pictures. You did them all at college. It's, that's yeah. quite an achievement, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, but also one of those strange things that people don't tend to think about too much. You know, I was probably one of the last waves that got support without necessarily having to, to worry too much in terms of uh, financial grants from the, the government, which is no longer the case. So a lot of the students that we work with now are probably finding other ways of having to, to keep things funded unless they've got some kind of separate support structure. So the idea of being able to almost in, indulge in thinking about everything, you know, looking at your shelves here, I saw Chauncey Hare somewhere and I remember that being in the library in Farnham, but I'd go through the library from, from A to Z pretty much, but to have the time to do that was a real luxury, luxury and a really good um, education above and beyond what kind of conversations that people like yourself and I would have. So this is very much a book about the, the working class in Liverpool. How did you get so close to the communities you were photographing? Uh, because it's a place I know very well. And it's a place that, uh, first of all, was uh, connected to, to my family, to my father, to my grandmother. And it would be one of those slow processes of going out and photographing in the, in the, the wide, wider street situations, day in, day out, but having certain places which would be regular stopping off points. And, also, the kind of place where you could take pictures and then return with the pictures so that people understood them or saw them and could tell you a little bit more about the structures of families behind or the structures of the, the teams behind, if it was something like football. Most of the time, there'd be places which would be won quite slowly because you'd, you'd be given access to places only when people were quite sure of, of the, the intention that you had for, for, for or your understood intention for the work. But then... That tended to be the kind of place that you go back and time and time again use as bases. So all around the football ground, I was very lucky that it was part of the football ground territory. So you had places which were in some ways very quiet during the week, but also a carnival at the weekend. So it was always always a, a lively but diverse place to be. So uh, I know you then went off and uh, basically taught documentary photography at Newport initially and now at Ulster University in Belfast. Mm. And just recently you've returned to live in Liverpool. Have you found, uh, what's the difference between say now and uh, 1990 or you know, nearly 30 years ago? Well, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing to really try and figure out because I've been trying to figure it out because it's almost like I'm going to exactly the same places. 
And when you look at the centres of, of some of the major cities in, in Britain, you see that they're, they may be developing, they may be, in terms of design, progressing, but then you step two or three miles outside of those city centres and very different things uh, are evident. And a, a lot of the things that I'm seeing are very similar to, to what I'd probably experienced in the 1980s. You know, there's incredible parallels to do with recession, disenfranchisement, um, communities which might not necessarily be as together as they, they once were. And, and of course, the, the, the infrastructure around work and industry is, is challenged beyond belief. There's no such thing as a working week anymore in, in some respects. So I, I found parallels, but I've also started to see that there's things which no longer hold true. You know, I'm not necessarily a campaigning photographer, but there's the percentage rise of things like homelessness has, has come, gone through the roof in Britain. And it's evident in every street corner that, that you, you travel through in, in the heart of, of these cities. Liverpool's possibly one of the worst. But it's kind of interesting now to start see, seeing how people start to make their own ways of dealing with some of that for themselves. So not all's lost. But would you say you're a political photographer then? I think, um, I think all work's political. In what sense? In the sense that the means to do it is, is impacted upon by the time that you have. The time that you have is dependent upon the, the work that you're able to, to uh, achieve to make the space to make the work. Uh, nothing is, no landscape is free of ownership. No social situation is um, just in its own entirety in a, in a cloud. There's, there's other things that impact upon that. So there's always, in terms of an overt, you know, I've got friends who used to work with uh, Millet newspaper, I was talking about David Sinclair the other week, who's now in Tower Hamlets in London, still a campaigning photographer, and we filter after dock strike together in Liverpool in the uh, late 90s. But his intention was very different from mine. My intention was the fact that I'm interested in how things that I'm seeing are part of a wider understanding of the place that I'm from and, and the people I'm probably contemporary of. So, but his intention might be a little bit more about pointing a finger at the situation. I think we all do that, but that's not necessarily my primary mm -hmm. interest. So what is your primary interest then? Would you say it's to articulate uh, your own ideas and thoughts about Liverpool, for example? Yeah, yeah. Sounds like it could be indulgent in the wrong hands. It possibly is. But to, to work out where I am in this, you know, my favourite phrase is not a photographer from, from Britain, it's William Christenbury's, my art's where I'm from. So it's about working out that kind of place that you have in the world, working out what, you, what it is you're doing uh, for yourself and working out a way of articulating something that feels right about the place that you live and, and the situation that you find yourself in. And do you think the, the sort of inherent anger you feel about the inadequacies of the Liverpool social services and social scene are, are a driving motive for your work? Uh, I would say they were the the driving motive for the work, no, but I'd say that they were they were just part of the detritus of living in the age we're living in. People don't necessarily depend on some of the, the laws of, of government. They find their own way to, to live their lives and I'm kind of interested in, you know, even in um, in the 1980s when I first met you, Martin, um, Frank Field, the, the, the MP for Birkenhead, who's still actually a Labour MP, although you listen to him and you might not necessarily think so sometimes. <laughs> was talking about um, the underclass and mentioned this group of people who were actually people I'd play football with. But, and I recognised, but some, he, even then he was recognising that there was different things in place and people who were living in that part of the world who would find different ways to live their lives away and beyond some of the constraints that have been put in place by uh, Labour and Conservative policies, I suppose, uh, Conservative policies at the time through Margaret Thatcher. So, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily the thing that, that, that rules everything. And for this sort of next phase of work, I assume you're going to be picking up the camera again. And Is it going to be a continuation of what you did before, or are you going to try and do something quite different and fresh and new? Yeah, fresh and new. Uh, yeah, still, still making work in the same places, still making pictures with, on the edges of people I know. Being the age I am, there's an awful lot of stuff which I've done which now people are showing an interest in, and which I've never published, probably in some cases because some of the things I've photographed would have meant that people who were in the pictures might have been compromised financially if those pictures were 
um, circulating at, at the time. But now you, you turn around and you blink and you're 30 years on from that time we first met. So a lot of the things that are um, maybe under the radar are starting to be of interest to people who are interested in publishing and things like that. At the same time, I still feel like I'm the same age as I was when I was 19, in, with you in 1987. Mm. I'm always thinking about work, I'm always trying to make work. Mm. I'm always looking at ways of, of doing things. But maybe the, the process of doing them is, is different. Maybe my relationship with people has changed a little bit because they're not seeing some naive lad with a, a backpack walking around the city, they're seeing somebody who's in their 50s. And so there's a different conversation to start things. But I'm still making work long term. And if we think about it as an overarching long term project, the pictures are still being made, yeah. Great, well, I'm looking forward to seeing the next phase. Thank you very much, Ken. You're welcome.